Um, okay, good morning. Um, and wait, uh, this is me. And should I stay still or I can walk around? Because I'm no normally nervous and I walk around the whole room. What I have to do? Right, okay, never mind. Um, okay, this is me. I'm uh, Marco Tuza. I'm a con uh, consult uh, manager consultant of uh, the Percona team. And I've been uh, in, uh, you know, around for quite long and I love the open source philosophy and I, um, yeah, and I really think that our model is the winning one. Also, if someone is trying constantly to destroy it. And, uh, but, <laughs> not Oracle. <laughs> but anyhow, let's go ahead. Um, so I, I will talk quickly about why we need to have HA and the DR and some technical dive and peak C specifically. Um, show some wrong design and then what I think it should be done. It will be high level. I mean, uh, there are some technical deep dive in around some uh, network stack, but aside for that, it will be high level and mostly uh, discussion, right? So if you have to interact, you want to interact, and you want to say, no, this is, I don't agree on that. I think this is different. Please do that because I love to have my presentation not as me presenting to a bunch of people looking at the screen, but uh, to people interacting and talking to, to you know, each other. So, um, so why we normally tr need to have a high availability? Uh, because you know, w nowadays if you say, okay, my system is cool, but I don't have high availability, is you are stupid, mainly or because uh, everyone talks about, or because, uh, uh, you know, your CTO mandates something. Well, non, none of this is true. You need high availability to cover, and, and data recovery, to cover specific needs from your business requirement. So what you really need is to understand, as someone that have to design, someone that have to deploy, um, high availability and DR solution, you need to understand what are the business requirements. Um, the other point that we have is um, that dimensioning the high availability and the DR is again related to that, right? And the problem that um, we very often have is perception and reality. We live in a time where we are constantly online. And we pretend to be you know, constantly online. We need to pre pretend to have all the things that we want accessible all the time. Sometimes that, that sounds a little bit weird, but also when we sleep, in our mind, we pretend, because we are pathologically really online, we pretend that also if we don't need it, the system is up and running because potentially someone else can, can uh, eventually access it or whatever. But business um, doesn't need that sometimes, right? So sometimes you don't have the need to be online 24-7 any, for any segment of the platform, right? You need to design whatever you need to design in relation to what is really uh, the requirement. So... Uh, in uh, my opinion, and this is my opinion, uh, what you should do always um, I I in order to identify a robust solution for a high availability NDR is to understand what is the right solution for the business, not for you, not because that will make you look smarter or your company looks good during presentations, but because that will allow you to be uh, you know, matching the business requirements. So if you have them, you know, the uh, 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 business requirement that say, well, you know, nothing will happen seriously if we are down a couple of hours during the day and you have, you create a crazy design to <coughs> be up, uh, you know, 23 hours and that will become very difficult to maintain and uh, only you know how to handle that. You are doing a very poor uh, service to your company because if you live nobody knows how to handle that so you need to keep in mind all this thing um, so 
business needs, technical challenge, and support the solution and know-how. These are th really the key. And know-how is uh, very often uh, underestimated, right? So the solution needs to apply, in my opinion, most of the solution should have the, should apply the KISS approach, keep it simple, such that you can replicate, you can transmis, transmit the know-how about what you have designed. Uh, the last thing you want is, again, follow the last shiny thing that is coming out. You know, uh, a lot of technology prom promise you, hey, we will do this, and you will have eight nines, and if you do it this way, or if you do it that other way, and then they will disappear after a couple of years, because that, that they are just transient technology, or transient solution um, in, the, in, our sh in our environment. Um, so the other thing is, very often, people try, uh, I mean, are oriented to choose solutions that have, uh, that they don't know really what they're talking about. So they trust people like us, consulting, right? That, that's good, I mean, for us. But at the same time, that is bad because you have no way to judge if we are telling you, uh, driving you through the, in the right way through the process. And that's not something that you want as well. Again, corporate know-how is important. And the other thing is uh, that uh, it happens. We have customers all the time coming to you and say, I need to implement HA and DR because yesterday I had a crash. Oh, come on, slow down. I mean, the crash is there. You need to fix it. Of, of course, you need to have an intermediate solution. Don't rush. Let's do the right thing. And as usual, uh, in, uh, at least in my squad world, and uh, we have that replication is the key. Uh, you can have two main group. One is synchronous or virtually synchronous replication, and the other one is asynchronous replication, right? They are, uh, these two uh, solution mainly solve all your problems talking about MySQL, and, uh, but they are totally different. Well, partially, totally different. You know, uh, one ha is data centric, and the other one is instead uh, server centric. So the data in uh, synchronous replication is, or virtually synchronous replication, tend to be um, the same at the specific moment, right? There are solutions that are more tied to that, and there are solutions a little bit relaxed, but the idea, the concept is that way. Uh, while server-centric is totally asynchronous. So whatever kind of data you have a master, it should be eventually consistent in a moment in time in the future with in the slave. But it doesn't mean that needs to be consistent in the slave at that moment, I mean, at any time. So we have two, we said we have two. One is totally coupled cluster, and the other one is loosely couple database cluster. And they're totally different. And while the totally coupled database cluster is data-centric approach, as I say, um, data is consistent in time cross nodes, but replication requires high performance link. So in order to have a replication working in a decent way, you need to have a very strong connectivity between the nodes. And Geographical distribution is forbidden. This is a must. Raise your head from the screen. Geographical distribution in tightly coupled database cluster is not allowed. It doesn't work. Don't do that. And by consequence, DR is not supported. And we will see why. Okay, so loosely coupled database instead, um, single node approach, local commit, but data differs. Uh, the single node state do not affect the others, while in, uh, in the data coupled database cluster it does. And replication link doesn't need to be high performance. You can have geographic distribution as you want, and you can uh, normally use DR for that. Now, another, I, an, another thing, what is DR? I mean, how many of you have a DR solution implemented? One, two. Okay. How far are the two sides, one from the other? Really far away. No. Uh, oh, I mean, how many kilometers? I mean, yeah, like two continents. 
to continent, yeah. to continent. Uh, it's, it's near, uh, only to uh, this is not a DR. So that's the point. In order to have a DR, you need to be geographically distributed. And okay, 200 kilometers, you are close to that, right? It's not really perfect, but it is. It is not exactly what. At least if a bomb happened there you should be safe but uh, if a earthquake happened probably you are not safe you know something like that so it's not really a deer and this is important the distance is important now um yeah how can you make the uh, in belgium then uh y you go in another continent <laughs> 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 okay let me see i'm talking uh yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah sorry. I, I I shuffle a little bit the the slides today so I, I it was like okay. So today we are going to focus on um, some discussion as an example uh from Peak C. Uh and this is because I have a higher uh, number of cases of stupidity and um or stupid things that happen around uh, in, you know implementations and I want to share that with you. So one of the most common thing that you see around, for instance, this and, and, and Pix is a totally coupled database cluster. Okay, one of the thing that still uh, that constantly happen with uh, uh, Pixi or slash Galera solution is the wrong expectation from people that doesn't really understand how it works, and uh, the consequence, a lot of wrong installation, and yeah. So I, this is the last one, one of the last one. Well, not really the last one, but one of the most representative close uh, to what I'm trying to show here, example. So I have a customer that have a very, uh, ha very well-performing uh, network in fiber channel. And by, by irony, I was uh, last week, I was on, on, a <coughs> on a customer that is a, provider for that and he gave me a lot of insight on how they use the fiber channel and how they distribute the traffic i was like aha now i get it a little bit better what is going on here and is never what i mean it is not what you think it is anyhow um so they are only 400 kilometers connected by fiber channel and um, they have two servers in one bc and the uh, server three was in a in for data recovery in a other um in a in another data center and they have a ping that is three milliseconds between the two sides and i have a question for you what do you think three milliseconds ping is good or bad it's very good it's good it's good Good question. Good answer. Sorry. Good answer. It depends. You cannot say it could be good. It could be shit. And I will show you it's a shit. <laughs> okay. So I said, uh, because they come to me, Marco, we want this. We want this up to set it as PXC distributed and we have three milliseconds. I said, what? It depends. I mean, it, as I said, it, what you're talking about? Ping? No. Uh, Ping, what is it, ping? This is what happened. The red line, this is number of transactions per second by increasing the right set, well, the dimension. And uh, the red one is before some optimization in the kernel and the yellow one after some optimization in the kernel and in the network. No, it, sorry, not in the kernel, in the network that they provide, but because I did some tests, I said, this is crap. And they say, we will do all the optimization and we will have, we'll be sure that our bandwidth will be fantastic and whatever. They do all the optimization and that was the maximum they can get from the service provider, uh, the fiber service provider. So just to give you an idea, um, the point here is with the increase of the, uh, of the bright set of the block that we, of the traffic actually not the bright set only but the amount that you transmit you have a significant um, a significant uh, increase of the latency uh, sorry this is the latency not the number of uh, uh, section the other one um, the a significant increase of the latency 
And here, for instance, just with 512K, uh, you have 37 seconds uh, delay latency. So from 3 milliseconds ping to 37 milliseconds ping, uh, 37 milliseconds latency. In terms of uh, transaction, this is, again, as you can see, we have a drop around 500 uh, kilobytes, which is not a very huge traffic on the network when you talk about a database that need to consistently, you know, uh, distribute the, the data. So, three millisec 37 millisecond latency, I, anyhow, 37 milliseconds latency, real, with, you know, the round trip, TCP, is not bad, right? So, do you think we can tune PXC and Galera to manage that? 37 milliseconds? Well, in theory, yes, you can tune it. I, I, I will give you the answer. But the problem is that it's not only that. As soon as you go out from the data center, you start to have instability. You start to have some kind of, a lot, well, a lot of fluctuations. And in some moment, you reach 200 milliseconds for the server. And in some moment, you have uh, issues in, uh, in the, uh, transmitting the data, receiving the data in a fashion, in timely fashion that the nodes start to, you know, say, okay, I'm, I may have offline, right? So, and who, who knows Galera, who knows PXC, understand that this will start to a process of evicting and rejoining the node all the time, which is uh, uh, horrible. So a totally coupled database cluster as PXCE is, that, that is not something that you want to happen. So summarizing, and this is interesting, w only 400 kilometers, round trip is 800. The theoretical time in uh, using light speed on uh, should be around 2.6 milliseconds uh, for, per, for doing the two ways. Uh, a ping takes three milliseconds, and it's traveling actually at 80% of the time, 80% uh, of the theoretical time, time that, uh, that it can uh, cover, 80% of the light speed in theory. But um, as if travel 930 kilometers, so a little bit of a overhead. Uh, TCP IP well, at 40K, is taking 4.7 milliseconds, 62% of the light speed as 1,000 kilometers. And if we go on, 500K, uh, 37 is 2.6 of the light speed. So if you notice, we have a huge decrease in uh, performance, just increasing a little bit the traffic on the network. So at the end, we have from 20, 40, 97% loss. When you design VR, you should think about these things. Now, um, what happened on, uh, on the server 2? Well, on server 2, we have similar thing, actually. This is interesting, right? Because you say, OK, it's just a geographical distribution that is affecting that. No, no. You have similar thing also on the server. Not as strong, not as significant, but still you have this kind of decrease of performance. So, but the difference is network is stable. So you can tune whatever you have to work around it. So summarizing, um, significant difference picture between ping and reality. Uh, we, had, uh, we had a huge loss when traveling to other side and well, performance loss and then instability uh, in the network. But why? Okay, so I want you to help me here. Uh, let's go to the physical layer. How I think that all of you are familiar, you know, how the net network layer works, right? So we have the frame, and I'm not going to do all the, you know, discussion around. I'm just, I just want to quickly cover it. So we have the frame, then uh, we have for the ping the um, uh, sorry no we have the frame we have the AP encapsulation right that has this header that has this dimension I, you know everything is there 20 bytes header 
and you have the Matrioska box that normally is used to encapsulate the thing. So you have the frame, then you have the IP headers, and then you have uh, the, frag the, the fragmentation effect. So for instance, if you have a DR distributed, geographically distributed through continents, uh, you probably will get some of a level of fragmentation. And this is important because the, um, well, actually the 1,000, uh, 1,500 MTU is local, then you eventually can have it uh, when geographically distributed, but it's not guaranteed. So, and when it's not guaranteed, you have additional fragmentation on the package. So all this is overhead. All this is you know, increasing the, uh, at physical level, at low level, is increasing the uh, pressure and the kind of overhead you will have. When you use the SEMP, like ping, you have an additional uh, encapsulation. So you have the, the frame, you have the P, IP diagram, then the ICMP. So, uh, even worse, right? Max transport is 1,472 bytes with the uh, ICMP. And uh, also, uh, the ping follows some rules. So you have no scrolling windows on transmission, it's fixed, you send it, either you receive, you lose it, or uh, there is no resend, and there is no congestion. So it's, it's just, boom, sent, and, that's and received the message. TCP is a totally different beast. I'm not going to describe everything. You know, we have this thing, uh, hey, I'm here. Yes, I know you're here. Oh, okay, you know that I know I'm here. You know, all these kind of things that TCP does, which is fast, but it's also slowing down the thing. And um, the, uh, the, the mechanism is also totally different because uh, um, it's actually not just sending the package, it's uh, actually opening a stream and uh, so performing a shaking, opening a stream is uh, double, so is uh, totally, um, uh, oh, oh, damn, we take uh, uh, dual, um, help me, I missed the word, okay. Uh, ta -ta 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 -ta, I missed the word. Operations, ta -ta -ta -ta. okay, anyhow, is after the shake is, um, you can send from both sides. I, huh? okay. After the shake, you have the doubles, you can send from both sides, so it's uh, a full duplex, uh, duplex, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm old, sometimes I lost some words. Um, yeah, and the other thing is that for each package that you send, you have to, d to get the acknowledgement. So every time you have to do, I'm sending you package one. Okay, uh, you are sending me package one. I got package one. Ah, okay, I know you have package one. You know, all this kind of delay and so on. And fa huh? the is batch by package, yeah, but it's still done. No package by package, otherwise it will take, yeah, okay. It's buffered, right? And this is the other point that is important. When you have you use TCP/IP, you have a slotty window of octet that is transmitted. So whenever you got an issue, and these are all configur for reason, this one is configurable. I mean, when you have an issue in the network, uh, what TCP/IP automatically does through the uh, protocol is um, string shrinking the window to redo when he has a problem, he needs to start to slow down to send data, it shrinks the window, and it will reduce the number of octets that is sent over in the stream. And then when the issue is resolved, it realize uh, the, the window gradually. Now, for instance, this, this thing, again, think about this. You have a database. You have a lot of transaction per second a lot of data that is going back and forth. This kind of things in a DR solution is killing you. So ping is not the answer. Um, if you want to test, I normally like this, and is a, a good way, NetPerf, um, with several settings, and I play with it a little bit, and um, it's, it's, giving, it's giving us uh, some good results in terms of analyzing. Uh, my guys in Percona have started to use it almost as a standard. And 
they have customer complaining because all the time they customer say I have a ping of three sec milliseconds and they come back saying no 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 you don't and I mean you may have three milliseconds but it's not what you need and they do and we have reduced a lot the problems uh, that we were having because of the network issues just doing the right thing from the start now what does it mean in terms of uh, PXC or Galera or uh, also group replication yeah that's exactly the point because we are talking about the same thing um, whenever you start a transaction you uh, a commit you create a bright set of several rules so whenever you do row one right, you commit and you send it right and then uh, very often in the in the um, application the, the in the platform uh, you have the chance to uh, to tune this well I, I'm talking very fast um, to tune this and given that um, you know you can optimize that this layer but I want to show you a couple of things but also uh, we were talking about 500k before right and we were starting to see some issues now this is a server doing nothing <laughs> okay this is was one of my server uh, in 2014 i think yeah in 2014 just doing nothing and just the standard uh, you know the standard communication between nodes was uh you know around 60k 20 80k just doing that right and and this for instance is uh, our uh, uh, server that manage um, this is from PMM, by the way, that manage, uh, I think, our website or, uh, or another, s some, internal some internal platform. And we have um, standard, and you can see that it's doing nothing as well, uh, something around uh, 500K. But when you actually work, when you actually have a system that works, you have much higher volume of data. And this means, oops, and this means that, for instance, this is a, a, a little bit of calculations, right? So if you have eight kilobyte, we will need six IP frame. If you have uh, 40 kilobyte to transmit, you will need 28 and so on. So one megabyte, 700, and four megabyte on a transmission on the network, you will reach the 2,800 frame. And this if you use TCP at full capacity, so this, the window always is at the maximum, the transmission always be optimal, and so on and so forth. So our point here is to let you understand that if you miss the calculation at the basic level, for uh, you can design whatever you want in terms of very cool solution, but if you miss the calculation at the, at the basic level, you will fail. And uh, Aside, for instance, in Galera, you will have uh, flow control because you, you know, the, the flow control will be kicking, will be triggered by the fact that it's not able to process all the uh, requests. Uh, the, you know, the distributed node will be uh, lowing, lagging in the back. You will have node eviction and uh, different calculation for the poor room and view creation. And w this means a lot because every time you do that, Galera needs to stop and say, hey, wait a second. I don't know who is going away. Oh, he's going away. So I don't know if I have still the poor room. Let me do the calculation of the poor room. I need to create a different view. What is a different view? A view is something that define how the cluster is composed so everything stops there and then starts again okay instability in the service and um yeah and then q q i mean the, you can increase the q but that w then it will slow down the certification part and then as uh i mean you were saying yesterday to have good long very large uh, Q is not something that you want because it will also if certi uh, certification is fast it can uh, it can affect the performance so what you should not be doing this okay 
uh, we have synchronous high performance link, synchronous high performance internet link, synchronous internet link, and asynchronous internet link. I have seen this. And what do you think? I think that the guy that designed that should be fired. Uh, without any, you know, kind of nice word in the middle. Because you have no idea what you are doing. And this is with Galera, not with, re with uh, asynchronous replication or group replication. Do you, w will you do this with group replication? And another thing that I don't like at all is this. We have two nodes, then another one in, uh, uh, again, through the internet, right? Uh, and then what I mean through the internet, I mean a connectivity that is also fiber, but it not proved to be high performing, okay? Uh, it's just with ping, doing ping, say, okay, yeah, yeah, it works, put it up. And then remote, uh, uh, sorry, an asynchronous, uh, an additional synchronous slave. I don't think this is work either. Have you, do you use something like that? Anybody use something? Come on guys, nothing. A lot of people does, a lot of people does. And again, here you have a very strong connectivity, but you have not proved the other. So you will incur in all the problem that we have. Again, this talk is about, okay, let's do a high availability in the air a little bit better. And w a very simple thing is think about this, uh, this uh, obvious limitation that we have, physical, you know, law of physics cannot be changed. Uh, instead, what can be done, okay, what can be done is this. Very, very simple thing, same design, exactly the same design, but you have proof that you have connectivity, uh, you know, with, for instance, with London and uh, is stable. So you have evidence that your cluster will be stable and you can actually guarantee that. And then the geographic distribution happen with uh, a synchronous link. But my preferred way is to do this. This is the most stable one. Simple, clean, manageable, and I want to know if you guys agree or not agree. You cannot agree, I mean, with me, it's totally, what do you think, right? Fred? You it, it is for the R, right? It is for the R. So one of the two is active and the other one is... Uh, yes, active. yes, and, uh, yes. So this is the other important thing. I was going to mention, thank you to raise it. Yeah, 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 I know, thank, thank you to raise it, because that is the other important thing. This is for the R. A lot of customers, sometimes, no, not sometimes, a lot of customers, period, think <laughs> that they have, uh, given they have a distributed situation, they have a master-master solution. And start to write here and say, oh, you know, I have this, to geogra this geographic distributed situation, but I also use it for uh, localization, meaning I want to have my application in Australia writing in uh, my DR in Australia, and then they need to, well, uh, it doesn't really work nicely. You know, I prefer to say that if you want to, that, to do that, you probably have some business needs that will justify to have two different cluster or some mechanism in, uh, in a way that they will uh, store the data um, in one way for, uh, uh, say, Europe to Australia and, uh, and the other way from Australia to Europe if you really need to. So, but this is my preferred way. Now, Marco, yes. That, that the previous slide, this one or this one? No, the, the, this one. Yeah. Uh, so you write in London as an example. Yeah. Yes. Um, but like you, it's it's hard to read from there. Like if you have an application that is reading on both sides, as an example. Uh, and uh, in Frankfurt, like I, I would be tempted to not have the cluster ready. Like you have three slaves, and if I dr, I will then reboot the cluster because now I have the problems of the cluster in Frankfurt. Uh, and then if 
You're totally right. I mean, I'm adding complexity where I can go for a simplicity and then when I have to do the DR, I can actually explode the solution, right? Because here, like, hit node 2 fails. Yeah. Uh, you have to repoint things. I'm coming there. Okay. I'm coming there. Cool. Bec but that's exactly the point. Uh, and here is going to have, we were going to have the solution. Anyhow, going back to the business continuity plan and, uh, you know, to the high availability in DR. What you need to have is a business continuity plan, so you have the DR, uh, the high availability, the DR with RTO, backup and restore with RPO, uh, load distribution, and uh, so on and so forth. So how to map this thing? HA can be PXC, can be uh, group replication, DR can be PXC with a synchronous replication to, with replication manager for PXC, for instance. And then, actually, I'm testing with group replication as well, and it seems working, but I'm um, still doing that. Uh, then a good plan with a backup and restore in order to be sure that you have the backup, and then you ship the backup eventually. Sorry, the, yeah, you, you backup. Backup restore meaning good back, backup plan, meaning you take the backup, you test it, and you are able to ship it eventually in the DR so, uh, uh, location to uh, for any kind of uh, disaster. And in, on top of that, uh, distribution of the load with uh, proxy XQL that we know is what we love actually right now. Um, and with query rules to you know, distribute read and writes. And of course, you need to monitor and uh, all the, the whole solution. So this is how it looks like something complete, right? So you have the incoming request, you may have a load balancer, then you have a generous application layer with whatever we have, then proxies in the different nodes of the applications that uh, point to uh, the active uh, cluster, and Galera replication, then you have the backup store procedure that eventually will be also pushed to the DR. And in the restore procedure, you need to be sure that your backup is utilizable because otherwise, you, what the fuck you're doing? I don't know. Um, then PMM monitoring the whole thing and replication manager for Pixie. What is a replication manager for Pixie? It's a very simple script that actually one of my colleagues uh, wrote and I start to help him in uh, expanding a little bit. Um, it's, it's written by Yves Trudeau and it's, it's a very simple thing. It's you, it used the uh, the fact that Galera distributes the information to know which node is active, and it keep the asynchronous replication channel uh, um, active if one of the node crash. Let's say one of the node in the in a, in no, in, the, in data center one crash, it will change the master and will uh, repoint the slave to the to the new master. Or if one of the slave failed on uh, in the DR. Uh, it will do the same for the slave. So it will always keep um, the asynchronous replication active automatically, you know, between the two uh, solutions. The cool thing is that you can have not only two DR, uh, not only two different sites, the uh, replication manager can manage a uh, quite large number. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm done. Actually, I am done. For the first time, I'm almost there. Um, yeah, so uh, so I think this is cool. This is a quite robust solution. We have implemented several times, and this is now our standard when we deploy things, and is actually working very nicely. I, that is, that's, okay, one, one second, let me finish and then we'll answer it. So, okay, some reference here for you and then yeah. question. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, I know of one problem, but I want to know. What well, I see, I see a lot of troubles in having master master in writing from the different thing because um, 
the main thing that I see and I uh, from from customer issues is the way how they, for instance, generate if they generate their own primary keys and they are not the identify the primary keys in a way that is unique by site or unique by server that will start to create a uh, issue in the data. Um, if uh, you know asynchronous replication for me in, in well master master for me is a model that doesn't really work at all uh, also in uh, in the synchronous in uh, solution because the certification that you have and the conflict that you have what problem you were uh, foreseeing Yeah, well, that's that they are different in the same place in yeah. in, in, uh, in the in place, but refer to the same thing. Yeah, so m m more or less. They yeah. are theoretically different, but in practical they are. Well, it, it depends. You know, or um, the point here is, you can always do this in a safe way. Of course, you can, but it's not so simple, and it's not out of the box. And so, given the fact we need to cover 80% of customer, to, you know, the 80% of what customer normally do, I think that is safer to say try to avoid it. And then you, when you have the 20% of people that really knows what they are doing, we had a customer that was doing a fantastic job on that, partitioning the right, identifying the right, you know, with a very uh, also small key. So because the other thing is to try to have the primary key that is not huge. I mean, it can work, but it's normally not a good solution. Any other question? Yes. Let's say that you run NetPerf, as you showed. Yeah. And you notice that there are some problems there, like high latency for purposes. Yeah. Anything that you can do other than start playing with routers? And you have kernel <coughs> settings that I didn't show here, secrets. It's my <laughs> 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 yes, you have a lot of kernel settings that you can change. And uh, you can help the, that uh, a lot the network stack to work uh, in a better way. And as the customer did in um, in uh, my test, they you can really ping the provider and say, "Hey, I don't think you are giving me what I should, what I'm paying for, right?" Because there is also the discussion between uh, single signal, multiple signal through fiber, and this is one of the things that very often the provider. Uh, are tricking, doing some tricks and use different kind of uh, cable that you allow multiple signal and with multiple signal you have multiple reflection in the cable because the light and that create a lot of um, reduction in terms of uh, power and, uh, and performance. Did that answer? Okay. Any other question? No. Okay. Thank you guys. Um, just uh, one second. Uh, let me see. Yeah. What? Ah, yeah. We are hiring. I know. I have to say that if you are interested, we have this position open. Um, Percona Live Europe. If you are interested, please, 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 please submit your uh, interesting speech for Percona Live Europe. Yeah. So there is a mistake. There is a mistake. Yes. Yes. I have the wrong dates. <laughs> you're right. It's in the airport. So if you think that you are going to answer that well, fun, no. It's okay. It's nearby. Well, it's, it, can, it can be, well, we can arrange tours, right? So okay. It's, it's great for traveling, though. Like you just landed, you're at the counter. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. And. Well, that's actually <laughs> a more interesting thing. thing. Okay, and then uh, Percona community, different thing, different whatever, and thank you.